power that raised him from the dead. That I want to, matter of fact, Paul said, I want to know him. In the power of his resurrection. I want to connect with the power that raised him from the dead that's flowing through his body. So anytime I feel powerless, that I can resurrect anything in my life. Right? That's, that's what I want to flow with. Right? So, so here you have, he said, I have all power. So he's letting us know we have that. Then it's something that happens. What we're talking about here is you have the power to create. You have the power to utilize gifts and the living witness. And you have the power... You have reserved power to access. See, he's, he has all power, so we can just draw on that power when we feel powerless. And one of the ways we do that is getting an agreement. Let's look at James 5. This is just a little foundational stuff. James 5, verse 16. Look, look. Transparency and vulnerability. Confess your faults to one another. Pray for one another. That would be a good thing to do. That ye may be healed. That ye may be healed. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. It says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Uh, another version says makes much power available. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man makes much power available. Draws on that all power. And then I'll give you Isaiah 40. Let's run over there real quick. I know I'm going fast because this is just foundational scriptures. Isaiah 40, verse 29. Look, it says, he, give pow- he giveth power to the faint. That's the person that's, that, that is at a point where they want to give up. He says, he gives power to the faint. To them that have no might, he, he increases strength. He gives power to the faint. So anytime, look at it as a... Uh, God is that supernatural generator. Holy Spirit is that supernatural generator. So when you when you get to a point where you reach your limit, you know, like if the power something happens, the power here, those lights come on. This, uh, that's backup lighting. It's backup power. So when you reach a certain point, you kick into your super, your spiritual generator. Look at Second uh, Corinthians, Second Corinthians twelve. Second Corinthians, yeah, Second Corinthians twelve. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, 2 Corinthians 12, starting with verse 7. It says, look, unless I should be exalted, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Remember I talked about earlier, married couples don't be overconfident. You know, what, he, what Paul was saying is, I, I got so much revelation, there's a, there's, I could be tempted to be overconfident. He says, so unless I should be exalted, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. He says, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it may depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace, my ability, and my power within you is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. When you've decreased, he's saying, you're kicking into my strength now. He says, most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Look, look, then he breaks it down further. He said, therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities in persecutions in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. He says, when I'm weak, I'm strong. When I'm weak, I'm strong. When I'm weak, what he's, John 3.30, I must decrease that he must increase. What he's saying is when I don't have control. See, subjection. When I'm in subjection, when I've yielded my control, to open up to his power and authority, I'm strong. In my time of weakness, in my time of subjection, I'm my most powerful person because Christ is the only thing coming out of me, none of me. See, I'm, I could be tainted. I could be selfish. I could be envious. I could be jealous. I can be afraid. So when that afraid part of me, when that selfish part of me, when that weak part of me is in subjection to Christ, I'm really strong. But when I'm feeding my, the, the weak part of me, I'm not, I'm not subjecting it to God. Then I'm weak because I'm doing things that the, the flesh has, has the first voice. My body has more power over me than I have over myself. All right? And then so, so we've given access to reserve power. And then let's go to 
Ephesians 3, this be our last foundational scripture. God wants us to walk in some power. Why would he send his son to die? Give him, sit him at the right hand of the father to intercede for you with all power if he didn't want you powerful. I mean, you can live a powerless life without him dying. Oh, if you, if, you know, it's like you should have told me. Like, see God going, oh, you should have told me. I didn't know you just wanted to be powerless, weakness, and bound. I could have left my son up here with me. Why take him through all that? Why did he go through all that? Well, should you go to the club? You can go to the club without him dying for you. All right, so you can drink, take, take him more poison? You can do that without him. To give you power over that stuff. Okay, what did I t- where did I tell you to go? Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, verse 20. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask to think according to what? According to the power that worketh in us. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. So when you get to, what it's saying is when you get to a point where you're at the limit of what you can think and imagine. When you're at the limit of all that, all that you can come up with to conjure to even make a request for. God is ever present waiting there with exceedingly abundantly above. Amen. In your weakness, you've thought through to some things. A whole lot less than God has for you. In your weakness, you communicated all you could communicate it, trying to bore through the doubt that's trying to stop what you really want to pray and believe for. In your weakness. But at that point, when you come to the limit of as much as you can press through the doubt, as much as you can stay locked in on what God's trying to get you to see, to think, God's waiting there with exceedingly abundantly above, way beyond that point. Because God loves us and he has so much for us. But we have to access it through power. All right, so let's go to John 1. We talked about this this morning in the new birth class. This particular scripture, not this particular uh, thought or aspect of the scripture. It says, look. It says, uh, John 1, verse 12, it says, but as, look, uh, verse 11, it says, he came unto his own, verse 10, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even them that believe on his name. As many as received him, gave him, gave he power. Now, the interesting thing is, going back to what we just were saying earlier, it's kind of hard to receive them if you're filled up with yourself. It's kind of hard to receive power if you're filled up with weakness. You would have to relinquish, yield the weakness to receive the power. So you would have to operate in subjection, obedience, submission, all those bad words we talked about earlier. They're not bad words, actually great words. But they've been tainted and twisted to a point where you run from those situations. When you don't realize when you're running from those situations, you're running from power. Right? Right, so, so, so see, this is the key. The, we, we're trying to touch authority. We want to walk in this authority. Because that's why God has us here. See, God knew that Satan tried to exercise. He, tried, he crossed over to rebellion and tried to take power. He didn't trust God. Like we were talking about the example of trust. He didn't trust God would give him power. Even though he was the right hand God. You had archangel angels. He was the top prince or archangel. He was Lucifer. He moved and music came out of him. He was adorned with brilliance and jewels. That, that's not enough. So then uh, the, Jesus said, Satan, yeah, I know that dude. Uh, yeah, I, man, I, I beheld him falling from heaven like lightning. Mm-hmm. Like before we blink, he was gone. So now he's in the earth realm. And God understands that, w- that he's going to try to manipulate and game us. God, God, you know, God created Satan. He loved him. 
So he was sent to the earth realm for a period of time. But he was like, well, I can't have him doing anything with you guys, so I'm going to send you to the earth with dominion. Now what I'm going to do is I know you have dominion. It's not enough to have it, but you have to keep it. Like we talked about salvation earlier. This is like we, we, uh, I gave the example of how you have, uh, uh, I work with a lot of video and, and different software. And, and even like when you do the website, you go on a website and you change your page. So you may add a flyer, you may add some artwork. So you change the page, right? Right after, the, the first time I did this, I changed the page. So then I, on the domain, so I, that's, the, that's where the website's located. So I go back to, I, I type in the website just to see how it looks if you just, if one of you guys typed in. It looked just like it did before. I was like, I know I made those changes. I know I made those changes. I made those changes. Something's wrong with this system. Well, up in the right-hand corner, there's something called save. To the right of that is something called publish. Uh, we do the flyers. We do flyers and the banners and stuff. So, so if you go on a, a, a Vista print or something like that and you're changing something, you can, you can change it, and then you look, and you're like, I changed that address. How come it didn't change? So, you know, some of y'all probably, Pastor Keith put the wrong address in. Pastor Keith is confident. My wife has done this. She's like, well, babe, why'd you put that address? I said, babe, listen, I put the right address. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. We looking at it. She was right. You know why? I didn't hit this apply. So you got to apply some things. Oh, uh, you, you got to save some things. So it's not just for the moment. Are you willing to publish it? Or is it private? These changes we're talking about. Amen. 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 I mean, I'm just curious. Is it published? So I got this new website. Ain't nobody seen it. Because <laughs> it ain't published. Matter of fact, the, the, the newer website that we had, we was waiting for different uh, things that we had to do at the church. We had it for the longest. It just wasn't published. <laughs> so we made some, a lot of changes. <laughs> <laughs> People was coming up to me, well, you, we, we, you thought about us doing this? Maybe it'll probably look more user-friendly if we did this. Are we going to be able to see it on our cell phones and our iPads? I mean, the same way, because they had a, a generic version on the, if you had uh, iPad or, or, or iPhones and stuff like that. And we were able to do it. Now, the whole time, we already made that change, but it wasn't published. So this change that you made, that you want everybody to give you props for, is it published? <laughs> Have you really applied it? Oh, it was just that day. The day you got the revelation. Oh, I just need to do better. Now that I got that out the way, <laughs> is that how we rolling? So, as many as received him, gave he power to become sons of God. Not, not just the people that talk about him. Acknowledge him. So, so they have to be submerged with him. They have to live in Christ. A Christian is someone that lives in Christ. Not someone that talks about Christ. I talk about Greenville all day. I'm not a, a whatever. Greenvillian. A Greenvillian. <laughs> like, like he knew, he knew, he knew. He's from Greenville. Yeah, I can talk about I don't live there. What am I, a charlatan? Is that? Charlatan. Charlatan, thank you. <laughs> See, everybody be knowing this stuff. I don't, yeah. But I live here. Yeah, I, I'm a Christian too, by the way. I know a lot of people in the room claiming Christian, but I'm actually a Christian. I live in Christ. I serve Christ. I don't acknowledge Christ and serve the world. Okay, so. I saw, <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so we want to touch authority. A person that's touched authority is sensitive to each act.